Apple have done it, folks. They made some bold claims. They made some bold claims, that's for sure. But they actually lived up to it. They actually lived up to it. So I've been using the MacBook Pro as my main machine for the past week. Wanted to give you my review, my verdict. Let me just tell you straight away, this is, this is definitely a must buy. If you're looking for a MacBook, if you're looking for something to do photo editing, video editing, design work, this is, this is the machine. This is the machine. I also want to thank the sponsor of this video, Tempo. I actually shared them in my newsletter a while back. They got in touch, they wanted to sponsor a video, so here we are. They offer a beautiful minimalist email client for Macs that's designed to help you focus and build healthier work routines. One feature I really like is batching, which means you don't get bombarded with new email notifications constantly. Instead, a new email is delivered throughout the day based on your schedule. This lets you set aside time for concentrating on actual deeper work or just have more time for yourself. It works right on top of Gmail so you can get set up in minutes and even connect multiple accounts so you can have everything easily in one place. Tempo is run by a small dedicated team based in Berlin and unlike the big providers, they don't sell your data to make a living. Plans start from 10 euros a month or 99 euros a year and all new accounts get a free 14 day trial. So make sure to check out Tempo. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. So we'll get started with the design of the MacBook Pro. Hasn't changed to be honest. It's the same shape, same design and everything. The only thing I kind of was hoping that they would do is up it from 13 to 14, like they did with the 15 to 16. Would have been nice to have just a bit of a bigger screen. There is something that I really dislike about this model though, and that is that you only get two ports. With it being a pro machine, I mean, I would have just expected at least four ports. With two ports, you're already limited to if you need to power it and if you need to run a display. You've already run out of ports. You know, I think two ports is very, very limiting. Would have been nice to have three or four ports. The main thing that we're here for though is that M1 chip. So what is so special about that M1 chip? So to put it simply, Apple have brought over the same chips that they use in their iPhones and their iPads, which were already absurdly fast and put them into their computers. They're calling it the M1 chip and it has the CPU, the GPU and the RAM all in one place. Now that Apple have so much control over their hardware, when they intertwine it with their software, we should see much better performance much better efficiency, less heat and things like that, and much better battery life. And let me tell you, it definitely does all of those things. Now, when it comes to the battery life, it is just awesome. It has blown me away how good the battery is on this thing. Apple are claiming 17 hours of web browsing and 20 hours of video playback. Now, I don't know who anyone who's sort of doing those in one sitting, but from my experience using Safari, Final Cut Pro and Sketch, the battery life is noticeably improved. It's actually insane how good the battery life is. I feel like the sort of news about the M1 chip has overtaken the battery life. But if you just had the battery life itself as the only improvement, I feel like that upgrade in itself is worth it. Now, one of the things with the M1 chip is software compatibility and things like that. So when I first set up my MacBook and I tried to install an app that wasn't ARM compatible, the MacBook automatically notifies you to install Rosetta 2. It's all done very seamlessly. Once it's installed, you don't have to think about it anymore. You can install Intel apps, ARM-based apps, whatever else it may be, and they will work usually completely fine. I mean, I personally haven't had any issues. Obviously using M1 apps helps a lot in performance and battery life, and developers have started updating their apps. Apps that I use like Sketch and Lightroom have been updated, but there are a lot of apps that haven't. For example, if you use Adobe apps like Photoshop and Premiere, those apps aren't M1 optimized. The updates are, are coming next year but they still work. With Rosetta 2, they will still work fine on your MacBook. So if you're very set on using those apps and you're interested in getting a MacBook, an M1 MacBook, you shouldn't really have any problems running them. Now, when it comes to performance, oh, it's just so good. So one of the first things is quick resume. So quick resume, I didn't even know it was something that I wanted and I didn't even think of it as a big thing when I saw it in the keynote, but just having your laptop closed, asleep, being able to open it, and having it ready instantly, as if like just waking up your phone. I mean, I just love it. I think that's brilliant because whenever you usually wake up a machine, there's always maybe a second, two second delay of it waking up. With these M1 MacBooks, they're instantly ready to go. When it comes to using M1 optimized apps like Safari and Final Cut Pro, bloody hell, the performance is just insane. Safari is so quick. I feel like it's so quick that it's only as quick as I can type and as quick as I can use my mouse. Anything I do, as long as you have fast internet connection, it will, everything will just load instantly. There really pretty much isn't any delay at all. If you like using Chrome, you can use Chrome. Chrome has been updated to be M1 optimized. And yeah, you can have a ton of different tabs open and you shouldn't really have any issues. However, I've switched to Safari anyway because Safari is known to be much better on your battery life. 
and you can watch 4K content in Netflix and YouTube and places like that. I really don't see any need to use Chrome unless you're very dependent on extensions because if you're in the Apple ecosystem, you use an iPhone, iPad, and you use Safari, you can just have everything synced very easily between all the devices. So yeah, really enjoy Safari. Final Cut Pro was the big one for me, mainly because using Final Cut Pro on my 5K iMac and editing Sony A7S III footage that I'm recording right now, you know, it's 10-bit footage, 422, very high bit rates, very compressed files. Just editing on my iMac was not an enjoyable experience at all. I would constantly get dropped frames, it would constantly stutter, it just made the editing experience an absolute pain in the butt. It just wasn't nice whatsoever. This M1 MacBook though handles it so much better. I can easily edit my footage. I can easily just watch it play back. I'll maybe get a few drop frames here and there, but it's nowhere near as bad as my iMac was. I can easily edit my footage much quicker, go through the timeline much quicker, skip over footage. You know, 4K, 120 FPS, 422 10-bit footage. Just handles it like it's nothing. It's, it's just shocking that something this small can handle that sort of content so easily. The most important thing for me is that it's speeding up my editing workflow, which can take hours. If a machine is holding me back, you know, a few minutes here and there every single day, that can add up. So investing in a machine like this, where it's much faster, handles my workflow much better, it's just well worth it. It's definitely worth putting that money into it. To put it into perspective, this MacBook Pro has 16 gigabytes of RAM and one terabyte SSD. My 2019 5K iMac has an Intel six core i5 at three gigahertz, 24 gigabytes of RAM, and a dedicated four gigabyte Radeon Pro 570X graphics card. The iMac on paper should be the more powerful machine. I carried out a render test in Final Cut Pro. It was actually for my HomePod mini review that has a bunch of clips in it. Each clip has around two LUTs and some color grading. So yeah, a lot of stuff going in this file. And when I look at the timings here, my iMac rendered it in four minutes 52. So not too bad. However, this MacBook Pro rendered it in two minutes 57. So nearly two minutes quicker. To be honest, I didn't even know it would be that much faster when it comes to render time, mainly because I just noticed the sort of actual performance when using Final Cut Pro and editing the footage. But actually seeing the two computers side by side and comparing the render times, damn, it's just, it's just so good how this, this little machine here can render my content nearly two times faster than my iMac, which is just over a year old. If you're a photo editor and you use Lightroom, you'll see enormous speed improvements. It, it again blew me away how fast it was in Lightroom. Being able to just fly through images, try different presets, make any edits, export images, it was just noticeably quicker compared to my iMac. If you use Sketch for design work like I do, you should have no problem using an M1 Mac for design work. I opened up quite a large 600 megabyte design file in Sketch with tons of different artboards, tons of different layers, just all sorts going on inside the file. And I was able to easily zoom in and out, no problem, edit text layers, no problem, move around shapes, move around images. I was just able to do so much stuff, just like it was nothing, it was just an absolute breeze. Okay, so I wanted to run a quick sort of test live so I can demonstrate to you how insane this is. So I currently have Final Cut Pro open with 4K content. It's my iPhone 12 Pro review. You can see tons of different files, 4K content, 10 bit, 422. I also have Chrome with a bunch of tabs open and I have a 4K video, my own 4K video from YouTube. I can have that play like normal. I can then go back to Final Cut Pro and I can play and it all worked fine. No drop frames, nothing. It just works completely fine. It's just, honestly, it's just, <laughs> it's just so good. It's just brilliant what this thing is capable of. Now with all of this performance, you'd expect it to generate quite a bit of heat. You know, laptops can get hot, especially if you actually have them on your lap. Now, to be honest, from the past week that I've been using it, it rarely ever gets hot. The only time it gets hot is when I'm actually using Final Cut Pro and I'm editing 4K content. And even then, the fans usually only ever come on, you know, once in a while when I'm actually rendering the, the content or I'm rendering a ton of different clips. Most of the time, I can't even hear it. I can't hear the fan because I assume it's not on. And there's barely any heat. It's just amazing how efficiently this runs. Now, when it comes to pricing specifically for the MacBook Pro, it starts at $12.99 and it comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of SSD. Now, let's be honest, for most people who are choosing the MacBook Pro, that most likely isn't going to be enough. 
you're going to want more RAM and you're going to want more storage. For the RAM upgrade up to 16 gigabytes, which is what I've done, it's 200, which I mean, it's expensive. There is that Apple tax on it, but it's worth it. You know, if you if you are working in Final Cut Pro, if you're working in Lightroom and all these sorts of other apps, I definitely think it's worth going for the RAM upgrade. It's also the same price for each step up of the SSD, another 200 for each step up that you go. So when it comes to the SSD, I think a lot of people could probably get away with 512 gigabytes of SSD, mainly because you can just store so much on the cloud these days, especially when it comes to like video content and things like that. You know, you can just stream it. I'm sure most people don't download movies anymore. However, for me, I went for the one terabyte SSD, mainly because I do video editing. You know, I want that extra space. I want that extra storage. I usually edit off hard drives or SD cards or whatever else it may be. But, you know, sometimes I just want a project on my MacBook, so I've gone for the one terabyte SSD. So overall, this machine is just seriously amazing and it's completely blown my expectations out of the water. I put my iMac aside and have been using this as my main machine ever since. I haven't actually used my iMac at all. I've just been using this. And yeah, it's just been an incredible experience. Anything that speeds up my workflow and makes me work faster it's worth it, it's worth it for me. I definitely think it's worth spending that money. And the other side benefit is, is that it's a laptop. You know, with my iMac, I was tied to my desk. I can take this MacBook wherever I want in the house, if I want to, living room, bedroom, wherever I want, or if I'm going away, I can take my MacBook with me. I can't take my iMac with me. And knowing that this MacBook, in this small little thing, 13 inches, is more powerful than my iMac has just blown me away. What excites me most though, is that this is just the first generation. This is Apple's first go at putting their own chips in their MacBooks. I am super looking forward to when they actually bring it over to the iMac, the 16 inch MacBook Pro and the Mac Pro. Once those machines have been updated to have chips, Apple chips, I don't think they'll be M1 chips. They might be M2 or maybe M1X or something like that. But it will just be amazing to see what Apple can come up with. And when they do come out with an iMac with a M1 chip or their own chip basically, I'll be upgrading to the iMac, I'll be getting the iMac, mainly because I just like having that massive 5K display. So who would I recommend this for? If you're a student, this is a great choice and something that will last you years. If you're a designer who works in Sketch, again, another fantastic choice, which will just enable you to handle design files in Sketch, no problem. If you're a video editor in Final Cut Pro, someone who works on YouTube videos, or you're a small budget filmmaker, or whatever else it may be, working with similar cameras like mine, a Sony A7S III, again, an absolute fantastic choice, and you shouldn't have any trouble editing your footage on it. Those who work in the Apple ecosystem and use Apple apps really shouldn't have any problem switching over to an M1 Mac. Most of the apps will work whether you're a designer, a coder, or a video editor, honestly, this is just a fantastic choice. As you can probably tell from my enthusiasm in this video, I am just really impressed, and I'll be using this as my main machine until they update the iMac or the 16-inch MacBook Pro. And yeah, I'll probably just have it connected up to a monitor and use it for all of my work going forward. So I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe for more.